Hi everyone and welcome. I am Chaitanya. You're watching Chai with Chaitanya. This is the place where I talk about books, movies, and fandom. And today I am talking about the three most favorite uh, opposites attract trope books that I have read. And uh, this is a very quick recommendation list that I've put together. So let's just go and dive right into it. But before that, I hope that you have subscribed to my channel. If you have not, then please consider doing that. Uh, the uh, you know the button would be right down here below. Uh, it really helps me you know keep making these videos. So if you have done that, then let's go. I think there's something very particular about uh, opposites attract trope and that is to say that we human beings are so different from one another uh, that no person, no two person is same and uh, when you have a romance wherein two characters who cannot be more different from one another sort of fall into love and go all crazy about one another there is nothing more satisfying than that and it sort of makes you actually believe uh, that you know tr you can find love because uh, with other tropes like enemies to lovers or fake dating I think uh, I'm not saying that those tropes are not realistic but com when you compare it to the opposites attract trope I think this one stands more better in comparison to the other ones to happen in your personal real life because how many of you have actually fallen in love with your enemy like I'm, I'm just very curious to know uh, or how many of you have actually have had a fake dating experience like if you have then please let me know down in the comment section the first book that I have that is a meeting of two, two prophets by Judah Tasha now I have a detailed video for this book which I will be linking up on the screen as well as leave down in the description box you guys can go ahead and check that out for my non spoilery review as well as a spoiler discussion uh, but what I will tell you is that this book has two characters one is a Jewish representative one is a Muslim representation and I think that is that just tells you that how different these two characters would be from one another because they come from very different religions and uh, you can go on to argue that you know hey Jew Jewism and Islam have certain similarities but the way in which the author has handled both his characters including both the religions is very interesting to note because at no point you feel that despite the author being a Jewish man himself or a Kisim Jew to be precise you don't get to see that how uh, he lets the Jew narrative or the Jew voice overpower the Muslim representation of the Muslim voice and both these characters are very unique whereas you know when when you have Mo who's a Muslim he wants to uh, you know accept his sexuality and even if his uh, you know even if his religion has told him otherwise whereas you have Moshi who cannot you know look beyond his sexual identity so when these two people come together there's naturally some sort of uh, conflict there's some sort of uh, you know problems that they both cannot really deal with and in a lot of ways this story is about how to navigate between the differences that you have and yet try to come together and cherish the emotions the love that you feel for one another despite being different the recommendation that I have is this time next year by Sophie Cousins and this is one of my most favorite reads of 2020 and perhaps of all times now the reason why I enjoyed this book so much was because of the concept uh, two people are born on the same day uh, on in the same hospital just one minute apart but their lives are very different so they even despite of the fact that both are main protagonists Quinn and Minnie they both both start their lives from the same place they end up going at, at, at separate roads and you get to see that when they actually finally meet destiny had it such that they kept meeting or they kept their, their paths kept crisscrossing but they just never knew that the other person was the you know the, the person that was born in the in the same hospital at the same time so uh, in a lot of ways uh, this book talks about fate, love and luck but it's also about how two people who are uniquely different despite of the fact that they started their point literally in the same place and um, Queen and Minnie's romance takes 
a very long while to develop so this has a slow burn nature to it but the way Sophie has handled it with the right blend of humor very interesting and well fleshed out characters and subplots and you know because this is told in a non-linear fashion so you're not only uh, following plot A which is in the present timeline but all the other you know subplots which is plot B, plot C, plot D which are in different uh, times or timelines even they are interesting and you want to keep reading them because you know you want to get to know more of Quinn and Minnie's life because you want to get to know how these two people have grown up and you want to root for them and honestly this was a very easy very breezy read and one that really struck the right chords with me and uh, yes I don't see why you shouldn't be picking this up and now finally I have uh, the music of what happens by Bill Conansberg now again I have a very detailed video review talking about this book which I will be linking up again on the screen as well as down in the description box you guys can go ahead and check that out if you want to know my full opinion and non-spoilery as well as spoilery thoughts on this book um, the relationship between these two guys are again sort of cliche because you have one boy who plays sports so he's naturally more uh, masculine and he is more like a jock whereas the other person in here is uh, you know is like a nerd so he is mo he's a little feminine and it's not my words uh, you know it's there in the book so even though despite of it having that classic jock and uh, nerd relationship it still fits very well in the opposites attract because these guys have had such different upbringings and have had such different experiences and the way they understand each other is very interesting to note because um, you would consider that uh, you know the the typical mindset of jocks uh, are that you know they are they are machoistic they want to be loud they want to dominate and whereas you know for nerds it would be that they are very submissive and they do not want to you know be in a power of responsibility or position and all of those you know society based norms that are there but this book actually goes and crushes all of that on its head and it gives you a very different kind of unique experience that too in the in the 80s so this is a historical lgbtqia plus ya uh, romance novel and um I enjoyed the romance between these two guys so much that I have recommended this book to a lot of people and Bill Conansberg is one of my all-time favorite uh, Cure authors. I have read his other books as well, Honestly Ben and uh, you know Openly Straight. So I think you guys should obviously go ahead and check this book out because the representation is good, the diversity is good, the romance is good and there is substantial amount of plot that would keep you invested and uh, the obviously the opposites attract trope also works very well. So those were my quick three recommendations for you if you like opposites attract and I would be seeing you guys super soon with another video. Until then, bye, have a great day.